In my last algebra video, I explained how to simplify algebraic expressions by collecting like terms. In this video, we are going to use the laws of indices to simplify some more expressions. But first, I'm going to quickly cover the laws of indices, and if you want a more in-depth video, check out the video in the card above. So the six laws of indices in algebraic terms are as follows. When two or more indices with the same base are multiplied together, their powers add together. If you need to divide two indices together that have the same base, their powers subtract. If you have an indice and then you raise it to a power, their powers are multiplied together. This next law is probably the most complicated law out of the six. But if you have a fractional indice, so an indice raised to the power of a fraction, we can represent this indice as a root. So with fractional indices, you have to make sure the values in the fraction are put in the correct place when you're creating a root. So indices can also be represented as a fraction. And when they are, the sign of their powers flip. So let me show you an example of this. And the final law of indices, which I think is probably the easiest to remember, is that any indice raised to the power of zero is always equal to one. Now this is a rather simple expression to simplify because we only have to use one of the laws of indices here. So all we need to do is place the variables in alphabetical order. And we've got three bases here. We've got the x base, the y base, and the z base. So we end up with x squared, x to the power of 1, y squared, y cubed, z to the power of 1, z squared. And here we can just use law 1 to add the powers together for the same base. and we end up with x cubed, y to the power of 5, z cubed. So that was quite an easy one. The next one is a bit more complicated because we've got indices with fractional powers. So in this one, we want to leave the final answer as an expression of powers. Again, with this example, we need to group the bases together in alphabetical order. And we can use law 1 again because the bases are multiplied together. And all we need to do is add the powers. And we end up with x to the power of a half, y squared, and z to the power of minus 1. With question 3, we've got two expressions divided by one another. These two expressions have the same bases, and that's important. So here I've split out the bases a, b and c, making them their own fraction. And this simply makes it easier to see what law of indices to use for this example. So we've separated the bases a, b and c. We've made them into their own fraction. And if we have a look back at our laws of indices, we see that we can use law 2, where the powers are subtracted. So let's do that. We finally end up with a to the power of 1, b to the power of 1, multiplied by c squared. And that's our final answer. So question 4 is another quick expression to simplify. And here we use law 3 because in this example we've got two bases, f and g, that are raised to a further power. And in law 3 the powers are multiplied together for each base. So when we multiply the powers together for each base, f and g, we finally end up with f to the power of 9 and g to the power of 10. 